Functional verification is the most critical step in VLSI design flow. It's the task of verifying that the logic conforms to the specification or implements specification properly. Modern SOC design methodologies have brought about an explosive growth to the complexity of modern electronic circuits. Verification tools such as simulators are struggling with the growing size and the complexity of designs. This has made the emulation technology more attractive and that's what we are going to discuss in this video. So without wasting time, let's head straight to the topic. As I said earlier, verification is the task of ensuring that a design is correct and complete. And which design we are talking about? It's the RTL design. So it's the task of RTL verification in the entire design flow the VLSI design flow. The correctness means that the design implements its specifications properly. So all the functionality of the design is covered and it's complete and it's correct. There are two main approaches to verification or functional verification, the formal verification and simulation. We will try to touch upon these two topics, but we will not go too deep into these topics because our main focus is on emulation. Formal verification is an approach to verification that analyzes a design to prove or disprove certain properties. For example, let's take an ALU design which is written at behavioral level. At behavioral level, we may write an ALU design in terms of equations, logical equations. Now we can verify this design by converting this ALU design from behavioral level to a lower level of implementation which is maybe a gate level implementation and then we can take the truth table of that gate level implementation and make sure that the behavioral level design and the gate level design truth table matches perfectly but this is a kind of a hard problem so it is usually uh, limited to small designs or verifying certain key properties uh, which are very essential for our design so it's not that applicable to uh, big uh, complex designs. The second one is the simulation. A simulation is an approach where we create a model of the design that can be executed on a computer and provide inputs and check that the outputs of the model match the expected uh, output. Simulation has a lot of advantages. Uh, I, I did not name all of it, but one of the very big advantage is it has excellent controllability and observability. Please give attention to these two words, the controllability and observability, because in verification, these two words are used extensively in industry. The controllability means the ability of the designer to control the execution of the system. So he can stop and start the simulation at any instant of time whenever he wants to that's the controllability and the observability means the ability to examine the system values a designer can stop a simulation and examine any system or environment values simulation also has several disadvantages and one of the most important is probably that it is extremely slow compared to execution on a physical implementation and there are many reasons to why it is extremely slow one of the reason is that in simulation we are sequentializing a parallel design if there are millions of gates in the design in IC all of these gates operate parallelly but in simulation each gate should be analyzed sequentially so for example if a microprocessor execute 100 million instructions per second a simulation of gate level model of a microprocessor may execute only 10 instructions meaning 10 million times slower also the second reason why it is uh, so slow is because we are adding several programs between the system being simulated and the real hardware that's because the simulation will take an instruction and each instruction has to be given to the operating system and operating one instruction of the simulation may be 10 instruction of operating system and 10 instruction of one ins, uh, instruction of an operating system may be 10 instructions or 100 instruction of hardware so it becomes 10 times 100 or more than that it becomes 1000 uh, instructions for one uh, instruction of uh, the simulation 
Emulation is a technology whereby the design is transformed into an implementation capable of being executed on a special purpose hardware. Again, when I say design, it's the RTL design which I'm talking about. Please don't get confused with this implementation as being the final implementation. So for example, if we are designing an SOC for a five nanometer technology node, first we do the logical implementation and then we do physical implementation targeting that five nanometer technology this implementation which i'm talking about the emulation uh, implementation has no correspondence whatsoever with the final implementation which would target a particular technology no right this is different this is just to ensure the functionality of the logic an emulator is a physical device onto which a system can be mapped relatively quickly in hours or days and which can be placed into systems a real eventual environment that makes it looks like the same system which we are going to implement in the future and it will be almost in the uh, real environment of that uh, chip an emulator has a number of blocks capable of taking a function such as tens of FPGAs and each FPGA can take one function. So we, if we have a big SOC, we may have to divide that SOC into 10 different modules or partitions and give it to each and every FPGA. But this need not be an FPGA. FPGAs are usually faster, but we can implement, uh, if it's a microprocessor, we can implement the microprocessor in an old microprocessor right if we are targeting a five nanometer technology node uh, processor we may implement it in a, a mature technology node maybe one nanometer technology node uh, microprocessor as well it is possible emulator also has software tool chain that configure the interconnect and provide runtime environment that makes the emulator looks like almost like a simulator so it has to configure uh, the interconnect within the uh, chip or uh, the emulator itself so as to it matches the exact functionality of the rtl design and provide the runtime right so an emulator can either be connected to a test bench uh, to provide the inputs or other part of the circuit running in a logic simulator so it can be directly connected to a logic simulator as well and this is called co-emulation where uh, the simulation uh, get accelerated by a hardware so it's also called as simulation acceleration these support designer to debug task such as stopping execution and viewing the internal values which are exactly the same as the controllability and observability since emulator is a physical implementation completely it is typically much faster than simulation because simulation where it's a software and it has to give instructions to the uh, operating system as I told earlier and also here the parallel plop, uh, parallel uh, implementations can be parallel as itself it need not be sequential right because of all these uh, conditions emulator is much faster than that of the simulation since environment isn't modeled here it's the real environment is the hardware itself uh, incomplete environment is not a problem uh, it is a problem in simulation in fact because in simulation we need to model the environment in which the chip will be so that problem is avoided here you might have heard of emulator that is connected to a live system which is called an in-circuit emulation and this is not exactly same as the emulation that we are talking about the the emulation that we are talking about is during the design phase itself the product is not manufactured yet that time we can do emulation for the verification and this in circuit emulation is after the product is uh, developed and this is used uh, for debugging the circuit in modern verification it's not just the functionality of the logic which has to be checked it's also the safety and security uh, of the design which has to be checked at the verification phase and emulation and fpga based prototyping help uh, help in these things as well emulation also has its own challenges nowadays because of it because of the complex designs and uh, soc uh, methodology where uh, many things are integrated into one single soc so the rtl if the rtl models are available then it's easy but if rtl is not available then we, they have to use the system level modeling or uh, tlm power emulation is also one of the very important aspect uh, since the test bench may not cover the huge range of applications when we say power emulation we need to ensure that 
uh, the power does not go beyond uh, this much requirement and it does not heat, uh, heat up the IC to a level which is uh, very bad or hazardous for the IC. If a general purpose processor is designed, then it is applicable for huge range of applications. Some may use it for uh, just for the PPTs and some may use it for just for Excel sheets and also uh, some people use it for video streaming but some people use it for gaming and also sorts of things right. These things has to be taken into consideration and uh, this huge range of applications should be tested out. But the power emulation cannot happen uh, at earlier phase of the design because it needs input from many other uh, data from physical implementation as well. Finally, we will see the drawbacks of emulation. There are a few drawbacks which I have listed here. Emulators are a lot more expensive than simulators, maybe tens to hundreds of uh, thousands of dollars or to a million dollars. But, but the cost per gate is steadily decreasing and that is a good sign. And emulators are still slow compared to the real implementation, which could lead to uh, some timing problems in real environment. Uh, for example, if you take a cruise controller, the timing is very important for that cruise controller. And if it is missed a little bit, it may not work properly. I have shown a figure on the right. You can see that um, one hour of the integrated circuit operation may take four days in hardware emulation and if it is FPGA emulation it may take one day so that mapping can happen and it can uh, execute uh, that functionality but if you compare that to the instruction set level simulation it takes uh, a year or so so it is still better than any other choices that we have and the mapping a system to an emulator can still take a lot of time maybe weeks sometimes if the design is so complex so these are the, some of the drawbacks of emulation this was a high level overview of what is emulation and uh, verification methodologies right so i hope you got some idea of what are the verification methodologies the formal verification the simulation and the emulation and uh, understood some of the high level concepts of emulation Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Please do subscribe to my channel and bye-bye.